Hi, my name is Avery Childress and Sella and I worked together this semester to raise some of the plants that were in our greenhouse. Um, so I'm going to talk about it from the beginning and then towards the end, Sella is going to take over and talk about more of the crops that we raised. So this is a list of the seven crops that we had in the greenhouse. And then in addition to these, we had a table of just miscellaneous crops that were either donated to us or students could bring in. But these are the seven main ones. And the one with X's on them, that means those are the ones Sella and I worked with directly. So the class was based on a rotation system. So not every group got to work with every crop. Um, and these are the ones that we got to work with. We planted them at the end of August and we planted 90 of each crop, um, besides the poinsettias, 90 of each crop with um, the mums, snapdragons, and dianthus were three plugs to a pot. The rest of them were one plug to a pot. They were planted in six inch pots. Um, and yeah, 90 of each except for the poinsettias, which had 600 plants. And all of them except the succulents, we had multiple varieties of as well. Um, yeah, so moving on, this is our irrigation and fertilization system. Um, they go together, but I'm going to talk about them a little separate. So the irrigation system we built as a class our first couple weeks, um, and that was complicated, but also really fun. So we hooked up these main tubes are attached to the, the water system in the greenhouse. And then we had to plug each of these little emitters into the main line. And we had two of these per bench, because um, this is a half bench at the end, but most benches were twice the size. And so we had two um, tubes running down and then an emitter for every single plant. And so the emitter is this little thing on the end of these tubes that you can't see in this picture, but it sat on the soil surface and just dripped water into the plant when the system was on. The system was automatic, so it ran for five minutes, three times a week. Um, and then in addition to that, if plants were dry, we would just hand water as needed with the hose attached to this system. And the fertilization part of it, um, it's technically a fertigation system since we delivered fertilizer through the irrigation system. Um, and we did that through this machine called a dosatron. And so we could set a fertilizer ratio of what we wanted to be delivered to the plants, which we did one to 100 was ours. And the way it works is as the water is going through from the like main line to our greenhouse, it goes, it passes through this dosatron. And as it does, the dosatron pulls up fertilizer from this bucket through this tube and delivers it through the system. Um, we would mix the fertilizer ourselves in this bucket and the fertilizer we used was called jacks and it was a nutrient ratio of 15 5 15 and for the poinsettias we had this we mixed it at a ratio of 40 ounces of fertilizer per three gallons of water um the greenhouse was actually split in two irrigation systems technically so we had one dosatron for the poinsettias and the half bench of miscellaneous crops. And then we had one dosatron for all of the rest of the crops. So um, the other dosatron had a lower, the fertilizer for it was at, mixed at a lower rate, but this was for the poinsettias. And overall it worked pretty well. We faced a couple challenges with emitters getting clogged throughout the semester. So we would have to go through and fix them, but they were an easy fix. It was just hard to find. Um, like where the broken ones were, we had to look for signs of crops being dried out more than they should have. Um, but overall, I think it was a good system and it was it was really cool to put it together ourselves. Um, so now we're going to start getting into our the crops that we grew. This is the poinsettias. Um, so there were kind of like four big things that happened here. So I'm, first I'm going to talk about the initial planting and the pinching of them. So we planted all of them and they didn't look like this the whole time. This was just before we got our irrigation system set up. So they're all together. But this is very soon after we planted them. And um, we, a couple weeks after this, once we had gotten the irrigation system set up, Pam came in and helped us um, to pinch them. So pinching is a, it's, you go through and you literally just pinch off the top couple inches 
of every single plant and that helps to encourage branching rather than just having one single shoot for a poinsettia plant because people like bushy plants with lots of different stems and branches and everything so that helped with that and then um, another big development that we had later in the semester was all of the poinsettia groups went through and did a drench application of psychocell which is a plant growth regulator and that helped the plants to stay like shorter and bushier rather than growing super tall so it kind of slowed the growth of the plants um, and then the lighting um, this is really important because poinsettias require um, a certain period of a certain length of darkness in order to start changing color so everybody's familiar with the white poinsettia plants we also grew i mean everyone's familiar with the red ones but we also grew white ones and in order to make sure they were colored just in time for the sale we made sure that they weren't they weren't getting the amount of darkness they needed until we wanted them to and so for part of the semester up until mid-october um the at night the darkness was interrupted by the greenhouse lights coming on and so just with that short little interruption of the greenhouse lights the poinsettias weren't getting the darkness they need to change color but then in mid-october um, we turned that off um, so that the period of darkness could be uninterrupted and that's when the the leaves started changing color and you can see that in this second picture they're not this vibrant red that you see in the last one yet but you can tell that they're definitely starting to gain color um, and then the third picture, we scouted for pests and diseases every single day of class, and um, the poinsettias started to develop this, like, spotty-looking disease on the leaves, and we identified that as alternaria. Um, it was really the only major disease that we encountered, and there weren't many pests. Fungus gnats were kind of a problem, and then white flies maybe a little bit, but... Um, Alternaria was, did become an issue towards the end of the semester, and Pam went through and sprayed a um, fungicide to control, I think it was called Compass, but sprayed a fungicide to control the Alternaria. And then finally, the final product, um, right before we, I think it was like two weeks before the sale or something, maybe a little longer, um, we saw that... Um, the plants were the plants that we measured so every week we would measure the ph and the ec of every single plant or not every single plant every single crop but we would do three plants per crop and a couple of weeks before the sale we measured it and the ec of the plant was way lower than the ideal range of it should be and so in order to fix this we said that we would triple the fertilizer ratio for the poinsettia plants. And so instead of that 40 ounces of fertilizer per three gallons, like I mentioned in the in the previous slide, we did 120 ounces of fertilizer per three gallons. So we tr tripled the amount of fertilizer they were receiving in order to raise the EC. And it was really fun to get to raise them and see them progress throughout the semester. So yeah. Um, that's one of the plants that we grew. It was the biggest one, um, but Sella's now going to talk about some of the other plants that we that we uh, worked on. Thanks. Hi, my name is Sella, and I'm touching up with the um, Gubber Daisy. So um, for the Gubber Daisy, we monitored three distinctive cultivars. They were um, Chardonnay, Strawberry, and Autumn. And our weekly assessment included the pH and EC measurements. So um, while the pH level consistently fell within the optimal range of 5.5 uh, to 6.5, we encountered a challenge with the ECE, which consistently measured lower than the recommended range, um, which was 1.0 to 2.6. So um, to address this issue, we made a decision to um, temporarily um, stop using the um, existing fertilizer and we focus more on hand watering the um gubber daisy with um specialized poseidius with the specialized poseidius fertigation solution so over the weeks um we noticed the um improvement of the plants and the ec gradually increased 
and um, eventually they were in the correct ranges. So on the next page, we have the gastera flow succulent. And with that, we encounter a different set of challenges. So um, despite the pH and EC reading falling into um, the correct ranges, um, we observe um, signs of dehydration and also um, the dry condition where are manifesting as wrinkled leaves. And also we notice the um, non-pathogenic fungi um, that had developed on the surface of the soil. So for this, um, we adjusted to the situation by um, hand watering and spot watering the plants so that they could stay hydrated. And we carefully also monitor the outcomes and it improved over time. And as you can see on the page, that's how um, the succulents turned out. And on the next page, we have the uh, chrysanthemums, dianthins, and snapdragons. So um, cultivar of chrysanthemums um, were um, jubilant red, touchdown white, and dido dark pink. And for the dianthins, we have the strawberry, crimson palette and crimson eye and for the snapdragon we had white sun glow orange and scarlet and our um approach involved like careful inspections so we noticed that they were passed on the plants and th they include like the spider mites and the um aphids and so um, we uh, decided to pinch and remove the affected leaves uh, to prevent any further um, spread. And we also implemented like treatment to control and manage the um, pest population. So with the early intervention, we prevented some further issue where the plants could have gone more bad but um, because we pinched off the dry leaves and um, attain to it like regularly, our plant is not like thriving and doing a good job in the greenhouse. And so on the next page, um, we have the echinacea. Um, we didn't really have a problem with the plant itself, but the only problem we have like toward the end was that the ignitia wasn't like uniform enough because there were like some shorter one and some taller ones and so we ended up not selling it for the plant cell and rather we made it like a plus one thing so overall our greenhouse is was well maintained and um we also had good lighting for the plants to um use photosynthesis and we had a ventilation system which controlled the temperature and humidity which makes it an ideal, ideal environment for the plants to grow in and also the the fans um improved like air circulation um keeping the um greenhouse healthy and also we also had a um irrigation system which ensured that each plant um got the um good amount of water for um their proper growth and overall um we did a really good job of paying attention to the plants to see whether they're over water drying out or if there were pest in the plants and we had a good result overall um, despite our efforts, we did encounter challenges, um, notably with the irrigation systems. There were like a few problems with it. Sometimes we forget to turn on the system and that caused our plants to wilt and cause uh, the soil to dry up. And also throughout the semester, we also detected some pest which affected some of the plants. And so to address um, the issue in the future, um, we recommended conducting a thorough research and um, having an in-depth knowledge about each type of plant. And also um, 
understand like their specific requirements um, that allows us to take a uh, prevent preventative measure and also to uh, minimize potential damage and I also recommend um, regular monitoring and early intervention so that um, the disease or whatever is affecting the plant doesn't spread any further and that is crucial to um, maintaining a healthy greenhouse and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you for watching